So let's get back to our conversation with our guest hosts, Nicholas Ferris and Jason Ambrose. So big risk events coming up, the ECB uh, coming up with a decision, and then we have Greece going to elections. Uh, both of them almost seem like a done deal, ECB doing QE and Syriza Party getting elected. Well, I'd, I'd never say that anything is a done deal in markets, <laughs> but um, it, it, it seems reasonable odds that the ECB will deliver something. Um, so, you know, we were debating the size, but as Jason mentioned earlier, it, it doesn't really matter about the size. It's probably just the direction, the fact that they do it. I, I guess there's, there's a possibility that they may disappoint, but um, Flexible Mario's had a decent track record of, um, you know, over-delivering, so, and, and I think he needs to. Yeah, and he also received more of a pass from the European Court of Justice as far as the OMT uh, program legality is concerned. So it certainly seems like the odds of the ECB embarking on a bomb buying, bomb buying program uh, are pretty large. But um, Greece uh, d dropping out of the Eurozone, is, are we, does history repeat itself of 2012 or no? Yeah, I think history does repeat itself and it becomes pretty much a non-event. January is meant to be the time when you come flying out the gates as an asset manager, and that hasn't happened this year. So I think a lot of that position needs to be washed out before you go into that ECB meeting. I believe that will happen. Mm. Um, and then I think it's, it's, it's time to really look upon how the ECB implement policy. Because if I'm Mario, and Mario's better than I, and, and he's uh, possibly even smarter than I, Chloe, um, <laughs> he... he he, he's, you know, whilst I think a lot of people are, are fixated on whether it's going to be 500 or 1 billion, if, 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 if I'm Super Mario, I'm probably just going to leave it open-ended. Mm. Because open-ended doesn't hold me to any, doesn't constrict me to anything down the road. And also, if, if I'm bullish, I can, I can think open-ended, does, does that mean 750? Does that mean 1 billion? Or open-ended, does that, if things change, does that mean I'm only going to get 400? So I think, you know, Mario is very good at, 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 at at reading the market. Right. He's very connected. He speaks to banks every day. He's not one of these central bankers that sits in the background. He's very connected to the market and expectations. So I'd expect that he will surpass expectations. So if it's open-ended, how is the ECB going to handle the cost element in light of the fact that if the yields start backing up and already two year and even five year uh, yields are below, uh, are in negative territory, um, how do they make up for what some might even argue a policy error? Well, to be honest, I think that actually be um, happy to see at least some of the the risk-free, you know, the German yields back up a little bit, mm. because that would be probably a, a positive signal on growth and risk perceptions. So, so that's an element of it as well. Mm. So, I actually think it'd be a bullish sign. If, um, you know, going back to Jason's point about positioning, in, in in previous episodes when when we've had QE in the past, typically as we talked about it, it's typically been the low in, in yields, and, and we we're, we're certainly getting near that point. If you look at the U.S. 30-year Treasury, it's back to the 2012 right. and 2008 low. Um, so, so it's already pretty extreme. And how does oil plus we have QE coming in uh, factor into the whole uh, uh, trading scheme for investors? Uh, I think with investors and oil is a void. Mm. I can't, it's very physical. The commodity, commodities are very physical. It's much harder to predict a commodity than it is a financial asset. So look, whilst I think that the oil price should probably level out on a longer term basis at maybe 40 or 50 dollars or something. I think that there's every chance that you can see 25 dollars first. Another way of looking at it, if you convert US natural gas into oil equivalent barrels, and you can do that via sort of a conversion factor, it suggests that oil could go to 20 dollars. That, that's roughly what... When? Well, it's, it's been there for a while. Mm. I mean, they, so that's the point, the natural gas, coal, all of the energy markets are actually connected so they're all substitutes for each other, which is partly why the oil has eventually probably come down. Well, thank you very much for your comments. Jason Ambrose of Vonda Securities and Nicholas Ferris of Eve Spring Investments.